even the president of the Bank of Karelia couldn't tell the difference. See, they are cut and packaged. I must get back to the embassy. Right away. Tonight, these will be the diplomatic pouch to Karelia. And by next month, threatened with a failing economy, the people will revolt. Sometimes capitalism comes in handy. <laughs> And sometimes it's a real pain. I uh, I'm afraid you guys are closing up store. Hold it! Tiny, don't let him get away! You take care of that one! Oh, hello, Mr. Adderley. Hey, Larry. Hey. How's the ulcer? I don't know. Doesn't seem to be getting any better lately. Can't imagine why. Poor guy, he's really been babbling up a storm lately. Comes and it goes. I listen and, you know, nod a little bit, because it keeps him happy. Tiny. Mother. No, it's me, Adderley. But a lot of people mistake me for your mother. How are you feeling? Plates. What's that? <coughs> breathe, breathe, breathe. <coughs> it's all over. Duplicates. What are you talking about? It's not. They think it is. But it's not. <coughs> Can I get you anything, Tiny? Not enough sheep. Yeah, well, you'll be okay. Get some rest, just get some sleep. Not much time. Okay. That better? Sheep. Yeah, you just close your eyes and count some sheep. Like I said, he can turn the set on, but he can't get a picture. See you next week, Tiny. He may not be here next week. Enjoy the sausage, Larry. Salt.
You and your superstitions. <laughs> it's nothing to laugh at. You think because I spill a little salt, something terrible will happen to you? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> like what? Who are you? What do you want? I want them. I want them now. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. You want money? Keep your hands where I can see them. <coughs> you know damn well what I'm talking about. I want them now, please. <coughs> if, if, if it's money you want, take it. But don't shoot. <coughs> Cut the act. What an act? It's... It's not over. He's dead. Wasn't Walter Caswell one of the uh, sick agents on your weekly hospital rounds? Yeah, he made Melville's brilliant attempt to improve my morale. Yeah. Why? <laughs> this came into your office this morning. Walter Caswell, field agent, died two days ago of Castinian's disease. He'll be interred at the Pleasant View Mausoleum today at 2 p.m. He had no surviving family. What exactly is Castinian's disease? It's very rare, Mona. It affects the brain and the lungs. You just slowly deteriorate physically and mentally until the disease suffocates you. Oh, how awful. Yeah. Tiny must have contacted it in his last assignment. Tiny? That was his nickname. He weighed over 300 pounds. Food was an obsession to him. He had a fancy for cream puffs. Adderley? Speaking of which... <laughs> hi, Melville. <laughs> European assignment came through, did it? Honestly, have it washed. This one goes to the airport. Have it there by noon. The widow will meet you there to sign the necessary papers for overseas shipment. How do I know what she looks like? You won't, but she'll know you. And please, give a thought to her feelings. Use the right euphemisms. And don't be pushy. And this one goes to Pleasant View. Have it there by two. That's when the funeral starts. You got that? Right. And no fast food stops. If you deliver those boxes late, you'll be in the next ones we ship. Major Clack wants you to attend Walter Caswell's funeral. That's right. He also wants you to, to be a pallbearer. Stop interrupting me. Can I help it if I can read your mind, Melville? So you think you could read my mind? Tell me what I'm thinking now, huh? Jello wrestling? Melville, I never knew you enjoyed. I am not thinking of jello wrestling. I'm thinking of the trouble you could get into if you continue to be contumacious. That's a big word, Melville. Four syllables. And used correctly, I might add. Insultingly disrespectful. You'll be representing miscellaneous affairs at the funeral, so I expect you to be on your best behavior. I'll be sure to leave my whoopee cushion at home. And don't be late. Bad luck to be late for a funeral. Especially if it's your own. Starts at 2 o'clock. I suggest that you dress appropriately. What's the in look for funerals these days, Moon? I think it's your basic black. Still? <laughs> yeah, some things never change. <laughs> funerals at 2, that gives me three and a half hours to change and grab something to eat. You could do some of your paperwork. I'm a slow dresser, Melville, and I hate funerals on an empty stomach. This job. What's that? We don't do widows. <laughs>
Hold it right there. Are you a good citizen? Why? Are you killing off the bad ones? Why don't you be a good citizen and get out of here? Forget you saw me, forget you saw him. Murder has a way of sticking in my memory. Ruth Moreau, I'm a government agent. Now please move on. What a small world. We're in the same team. V.H. Adderley, miscellaneous affairs. Great. All I need is some paper pusher getting in my way. Look, V.H. Adderley, do me a favor and get lost. I'll be sure to send a letter of accommodation to your superiors. Who is he? You don't need to know. Now please. He's been taken care of. You know there's a $500 fine for littering in a public park? Are you always as persistent? Only when I'm awake. Your friend with a gun got away in a white 86 Porsche. License plate ZON495. You didn't have to get the serial number off the engine, did you? He doesn't concern me anyway. He was just trying to scare me. Well, the way you hit the deck, I'd say he succeeded. Mr. Adderley, I'm sure you're a very nice person. Now, would you please let me do my job? And what is that exactly? It's very complicated. Well, I specialize in complication. All right, if you want to help me, you can do me a favor. Name it. Get me to a phone booth. You don't have a car? It's piled into a tree about three miles back. I'd say you have the situation well in hand. 418 cattle call. Disposal at Fairway Park. Wish near clearing tag twice. Where? I'll check it out. Quick ID check. VH... Excuse me. Adderley? Adderley. Miscellaneous affairs. <sighs> Next check in 1800, 418. Seems you're quite a busybody. Former operative, code name Beauty One, reassigned to miscellaneous affairs. Did they tell you about the mole on my behind? No? Well, they're not as thorough as I thought. Now, can you tell me what this is all about? The less you know, the better. The more you know, the more you owe, right? Exactly. Let's go. I have to check in, too. Adderley, why aren't you already at Caswell's funeral? Uh, something came up, Melville. I'm sure something came up. She's a government agent, and her life is in danger. <laughs> For God's sakes, Adderley. Can't you think of something more original? I won't be able to make it to Tiny's funeral. You have to. Major Clack ordered you to be there. And when Clack finds out what I've stumbled on, he'll want me to pursue it. Doubt that, seriously. Well, I could get the agent, Ruth, to phone Major Clack, but I do hope he's not in one of his moods. This better be as important as you say. It'll put us on the map. I'm not dressed properly. I'm sure Tiny won't mind. You owe me, Adderley. <laughs> I owe you many, Melville. Don't mind him, he's just my boss. Shall we? your life. When I say now, open the door. Like 
whoever you're expecting checked out. Coffee. Drugs. Master scent throws the dogs off. They were here all right, but they're moving. Like they left someone behind to clean up. We don't have much time. I will, but you've got to tell me what's going on first. As soon as we check in, I think there was a telephone back around the corner. Yeah, there was, but we're going in that direction. Where? Some place you won't be shot at. Mona? Ruth Moreau. Ruth Mona is our most valuable but underpaid public service. Hello. Hi. Can I use your phone? Yeah, sure. Now, Mr. Greenspan almost had a seizure when he found out you weren't going to the funeral. He's had seizures before, Mona, and he managed to pull through without too much permanent damage. Besides, this is important. Who is she? A government agent and part-time clay pigeon. Town in. I'll get right on it. Now, can you tell me what's going on? Drug trafficking? It's politically motivated. That's all I can say. I have to get to the town in as fast as possible. Why? I have to pick something up. Let me do it. You've done enough already. Thank you. You realize every time you take a step, you're like a duck in a shooting gallery? What makes you think they won't be waiting for you? It's a chance I'll have to take. Well, then we'll go together. Besides, you know how hard it is to get a cab around here? <laughs> Come on. Psst. Ruth Moreau. Find out all you can. I want to know more about her. How much more? Strictly business, Mona. Warfare or dream of fighting fields no more. Sleep the sleep that knows not breaking, morn of toil nor night of waiting. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Get moving. We're gonna go for a little walk. What is it you want, Hugo? You know what I want. You two know each other? I've been tracking this man for two years. Tracking is, but you haven't caught up with me yet, have you? It's the sports car. Good investment for a life of crime. Today I'll have vengeance. I'll have what is rightfully mine. Listen, you take me out of the picture and another agent steps in. We're relentless. So am I. You're forgetting one thing. What's that? I'm relentless too. Yeah? Are 
he got away? Oh, he'll be back. Probably with a few of his colleagues. How's your aunt? It's disgraced. I'll live. Come on, I'm taking you back to ISI. Oh, no, you don't. You realize how conspicuous he'll be dripping blood all over the hotel carpet? I'll wait in the car. Oh, great. Remind me to paint a bullseye on your forehead. What happened? Get a first aid kit, Mona. I still don't like this. This will be safer here. But you won't. That won't be the first time. I need to know what it is I'm looking for. I'll do it. I've done this kind of thing a number of times before. Could you open that for me? Yeah. Is it a suitcase? In room 718 under the bed. I need it. What's in it? It's not important. What's important is that we get to it before Hugo and his buddies. Hugo doesn't know where it is? No, he was hoping I'd lead him to it. But now he knows you. He knows your car. He'll probably be following you. I'll be careful. Oh, the room key. Try and make yourself comfortable. It's not much, but uh, it's home. What should I do? I want you to keep an eye on her. Protect her at all costs. Yes, I will do my best. If anybody comes down here, use this. Um, oh, my gosh. I, I'm not used to these, you know. You're operational now, Mona. Get used to it. Yeah, but won't you need it? I'll get another one from weapons. Oh, boy. You know, you can count on me, VH. I know I can, Mona. lucky. At least he gets to lie down. Where's Adelia? Wait, don't tell me. He's up. Yes, but he's going to be back very soon, Mr. Greenspan. I want to see him when he gets back. Yes, sir. Mona, is that a gun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of, well, you see, what happened was Adderley gave it to me. Well, be careful. One funeral a week is enough. Yes, sir. Do you mind if I ask what you're waiting for? Nothing anymore.
you get me some paper towels? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, gee, you know, I really think we should be calling the doctor. Oh, when Aunt Early gets back. Towels. Tow towels. Sweeney's repairs. Yeah, listen, Sue Ann, I'm just... What? How's Ruth? Gone. Gone? I just got a call from Sue Ann in Central Files. Um, Ruth Moreau used to be a government agent. Used to be? She died a year ago. Wait a minute. sugar. Well, well I, I don't get it. <laughs> what? Corn syrup. Stage blood. <sighs> Mona, I've been had. I don't believe a word of this. You're just making up a phony alibi because you didn't want to go to the funeral. The guy in the elevator was stalling for time. Why? That is what I intend to find out. What about this woman? What's her name? Ruth Moreau. And she wasn't a government agent after all. Oh, yeah, she was. But she died last year. She was using a dead agent's ID. Who would want to shoot her? The guy in the elevator, Hugo. Only he didn't shoot her. He was pretending. Pretending. This whole thing is pretense, Melville. I just don't know why they did it. It wasn't because I could get stuck at the never-ending funeral. No. Adderley. This was a ploy for you to get out of doing your job. What? I'm sick and tired of you trying to circumvent my orders. Circumvent? Did you buy a thesaurus, Melville? None of this would have, none of this would have happened if you'd obeyed orders. Now you've gone and made fools of the three of us. You, you've embarrassed the whole department. Melville, the three of us are the whole department. When Clack hears of this... He won't hear about this. Why not? Because you won't tell him. I won't? Because everything I do is under your careful supervision. Adderley, I am not finished yet. I am. Uh, Adderley. Melville, somebody went to a lot of trouble to give me the runaround all day, and I'm going to go to a lot of trouble to find out why. Doesn't make any sense, Mona. What? Everything. Nobody seemed to profit from what happened. No money was stolen. The only thing it did was make me look like an idiot. Oh. That makes two of us. No, three of us. But the best way to find the cause behind this is to look at the effect. The effect? 
The only thing this whole scam accomplished was keeping me from Tiny's funeral. But why? Oh, that's the key behind this whole mess. Any trouble? A little. It's as good as you expect. Let's just hope we've got enough time. Don't you knock. Melville, did you notice anything unusual about Walter Caswell's funeral? What do you mean? Well, I mean, did anything strike you as odd or different? Annerly, the only thing that I noticed was the hernia I almost got from carrying his casket, which was your job in the first place. The casket? I almost tore the arm from my socket and gave me a headache. What was it made of? Standard ISI issue, wood. Why do you... Just curious, Melville. Thanks. Mona, I need you to get some information for me. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course, what? I think you could get on Tiny's last assignment, where he was, what he was doing, and the mortician that prepared the remains. Okay, where are you going? See the last person that saw Tiny alive. Yeah, he mumbled a lot. Got on my nerves after a while. Kept talking about sheep and plates and I don't know what. Hey, uh, how would you like some Italian beef sausage? It's Italian beef sausage? No, I'm trying to cut down. Oh, okay. Anyway, a couple of days before he cashed in, he kept mumbling about how he didn't have any time or something. It's going to happen soon? Yeah, like he had a premonition of his own demise. We're talking Twilight Zone here. Jeez. And then, when he pulled a gun on me, that, what, right after you left. He pulled a gun on you? Yeah, didn't you know? He made a getaway out the window. He got away. I tell you, the butter really slipped off his noodles. Jeez. They found him the next day out on the street, hard as a rock. Did you have any other visitors? Yeah, yeah, a woman. Very petite, prime catch. I'm telling you, her legs went all the way up to her neck. How often did she visit? Uh, just once. And she asked me a lot of questions and said she was a relative. Did you ever mention me to her? Yeah, yeah. I told her that uh, you were the only one that came to visit him, and that every time you came, you brought flowers. She seemed interested in that. Yeah. I bet. Any luck? Yeah, yeah. I had to use up a lot of favors. This guy, Tiny, is a very highly classified guy. His last assignment was cracking a counterfeiting operation being done in Calgary. It seems some unfriendly aliens were putting up phony currency of Corellia, some uh, plot to bankrupt the National Treasury. But, but Tiny got to them before they could smuggle it out. Where's Corellia? It's in the Mediterranean. Anyway. ISI confiscated the counterfeit Corellian currency and closed the book on the whole affair. But, now, but, the engraver escaped in the raid. Tiny was convinced he'd made duplicate plates and they'd try to smuggle them out of the country. Plates? <laughs> yeah. So we put in a request to continue the operation, but his sickness became acute. No one believed him and he was taken out of action. <sighs> What's so funny? Nothing, it's just... It's just, oh, it's how Tiny discovered the counterfeit bills. I mean, how was that? Well, it's so silly, this, this, this Corellian currency, right? It's got a picture of a shepherd and his flock on the back, but on the counterfeit bills, the shepherd is one sheep short. Not enough sheep. <laughs> yeah, does, does that mean something? Something that Tiny said before he died. He was thin and frail, couldn't have weighed more than 100 pounds. <laughs> There's no way that casket should have weighed that much, even for Melville. What about the mortician? Well, they had four deliveries today. Tiny, two to churches, and one out of town. Where are you going? The mortician. See if Tiny had any visitors. Have you got it? In the back. How did your side of it go? Piece of cake. I don't like doing this at all. It is very bad luck. I've been getting caught as bad luck. We're on a roll. Why don't you relax and enjoy it?
Yes, we handled the body, delivered it to the Pleasant View Mausoleum today. Were there any visitors before you delivered it? Anybody playing Last Respects? No. And none was scheduled. It was a closed casket. Were there any other deliveries today? Two open caskets to a uh, Baptist church and a congregational church and uh, one other closed casket. Where'd it go? We delivered it to the airport for overseas shipment tonight. Thanks. It was a mistake. What was? The whole cause of the scam. The counterfeiters thought they'd smuggle the plates out of the country in the caskets. But the mortician, who can't see past his nose, got the tag switched and sent the wrong body to Tiny's funeral. So what happened to Tiny? He went to the airport. <laughs> I bet they'll be surprised to see him on their list again. Yeah, but why? Well, how could... They how... knew that I'd noticed the difference in weight and get suspicious, so they kept me from the funeral. Oh. Come on, I need your help. Where are we going? The mausoleum. Mausoleum. Ellie, you're not going to... We're not doing what I think we're going to do because I... I phoned the I, airport, Mona. We, the body's uh, booked on a 10 p.m. flight, and we have to make sure the plates don't go with it. Adelie, we can't. Um, we got to... Because Mr. Greenspan, we can't. We got to tell him that we're leaving, so... <laughs> Dear Melville, gone to Necropolis, love, V.H., and Mona. By the time he looks up Necropolis and his thesaurus, it'll be six o'clock and we'll be off work. Oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. Being operative isn't all fun and games. Are you here to visit a loved one? A much loved one. Uh, how nice. Uh, may I inform you that the mausoleum will be closing in 15 minutes? You may, and you have. We'll be brief. I was creepy. Prerequisite for the job, Mona. So quiet in here. Yeah, well, they tried music, but it didn't work. What are you doing? Getting some fresh air. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Where are you going now? We take a look. Oh, must be the showroom. Want to take a test drive? I can wait. Where are you going now? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Walter Caswell. not sealed. Well, luck. Hmm. Well, shall we take a look? Probably. This is morbid. Well, think of it as paying our last respects. Why don't you go look out for the Grim Sweeper? right? What is it? They did make duplicate plates. Who is he? The unwitting courier. Ladies and gentlemen, the mausoleum will be closing in five minutes. That doesn't wake the dead. I don't know what will. Thank you.
Let's keep the blood flowing. Oh, perfect timing. What? Look. Time to play music with bodies. Here we go, Walter Caswell. It's Ruth. And the rest of her counterfeiters. Mona, I need you to stall them for a few minutes. How? Improvise. Improvise. I'm going inside. How are you going to get in? Oh, I don't know. Open window, maybe? I don't like this. It's bad luck to defile the dead. Uh, you and your superstitions. Relax, Ivan. It's almost over. Persistent, Mr. Adderley. I told you, I specialize in complication. There wouldn't have been any complications if it wasn't for that imbecile mortician. Good luck's hard to find these days. Is it? You certainly played into our little game rather nicely. I told you I hate to lose. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the game's over. Now, where's the other body? He's in the showroom. I put him in one of the more expensive models. Well, maybe you'll be so kind as to retrieve him. We'll simply switch the caskets and be on our way. Bad luck to raise the dead. Don't move. Well, you're two ounces heavier. She's not bluffing. Good work, Mona. Looks like we got him dead to rights. And as you head off to that great assignment in the sky, I can only hope that there's enough for you to eat. Sleep well, Tiny. Rest in peace. Nice send-off, VH, even if it was a bit short. Short, but from the heart. Well, at least now everybody's in their place. Counterfeiters are locked up, and Tiny can rest easy. <laughs> <laughs> 